I think we should be online now and uh, we're just waiting a minute until we start the live session today. Just checking the sound if it's okay and uh, looks like. I think we are at uh, nine o'clock here in Denmark at least and uh, I think we already have some viewers on. So uh, let's start out. Welcome to our first uh, live session here at uh, Invertech in Denmark. Uh, this is our very first live session, so we are a bit nervous, of course. <laughs> and uh, today's live session will be saved on YouTube, so you can afterwards go in and, uh, and I'll send the link to some of your colleagues. Or you can uh, see it again if you have something you want to see again. We uh, have been working a lot the last two or three days on the, all the technical setup. Uh, so we hope everything works with no hiccups and um, but let's get going with the session today. What is a guide stack storage? It's an automatic buffer for stacked items and stacked items it could be something like towels here, bigger towels, it could be uh, linen, stacks of linen, duvet covers like here or sheets. It could also be uh, workwear like uh, hospital uniforms or heavy workwear. So it could be all kinds of uh, textile stacks. Uh, what is the main benefit of uh, guide stack storage? It is to centralize your packing area, to give you a better inventory control and make sure you get the right articles to the right customer. It's to ensure you have a better hygiene because you have fewer touches of the linen and it's also to improve the ergonomic and the working environment of the laundry and of course with a good uh, return on investment. Today we will uh, first of all do a, a quick run of the system mm -hmm. and then uh, in the end of the, sh uh, the session we will uh, go more into technical details. But um, yeah, my name is Matt uh, Andreessen, I'm the CEO and founder of Invertech and here by my side I have Casper. Uh, yeah. Hello and welcome everybody. I'm happy to be here. And uh, yes, my name is Kasper Simonsen. I'm a project manager here at Invertech. I'm also a project manager for this system. And um, it's the system we will deliver to a company in Germany called Frei Textil Reinigung in a few weeks. And uh, Mas, can you tell more about yeah, the, the Frei and yeah, Frei Textilreinigung in Burgau in Germany. It's a healthcare laundry in uh, southern Germany. And uh, as a healthcare laundry, they have many different articles or SKUs. And uh, this system is planned to be used for there are around 20 of the high runners or the, where, where they have a lot of articles uh, or a lot of, um, of products. Uh, it's pool articles. And they, these 20 articles, they cover around a big amount of their production. Um, I think actually we have uh, Family Fry online today. Uh, so welcome if you are online. And uh, it's, I think it's first time you see you, uh, your machine live and uh, you will soon see it in your laundry in, uh, in Germany, end of June running. So that we are really excited about that. Fry is, uh, is a first mover uh, for a system like this in, in Germany. And it's uh, the second installation we have made of, the, of this kind in Europe. So uh, this is a very important reference uh, for us, for Invertech as a company. But what is it actually that uh, Fry would like to solve with a system like this? Yeah, today at Fry they have uh, lots of manual processes with the handling the stacks and packing the orders for, for the different customers. And uh, with this new system, it will be more automated and um, when, when what they ask us is that they want to ensure that the quality of the delivery to the customers and ensuring that the right articles go out to the right customers. So also because it is automized, it, uh, the, the operators needs, needs less training to be able to pack the orders. So um, let's see how it works and we will start uh, at the inlet here and uh, yes. Will you go to that and... Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. We're not here only to talk. Let's uh, show the system. Yeah. So uh, I will uh, move down here. And uh, as you see here, we have already some stacks. Uh, you should imagine that we have the, um, 
the uh, the iron lines they are placed over here and uh, they have the folding uh, machines behind it and uh, the stacks are delivered to, uh, to the operators and then you should imagine you have a big screen over here where they uh, where they can see the, the demand uh, for, the, for the upcoming orders yes. so uh, the people actually the people behind the ironers or in front of the ironers they can see oh we need uh, 10 stacks of this or 50 stacks of this so they can feed the ironers with the with the right articles yes. and when they come out of the folding machines then the the, uh, the operators behind the ironers they feed the stacks onto a conveyor here and uh, and then it goes into the, uh, an operator placed over here but uh, let's start the system so you can get some stacks and feed into the system yes just bring them yes so here is the infeed station yes here's the infeed station on the screen here i can see what is needed for the upcoming orders so for the upcoming orders i can see that we need green stacks and white stacks so that's that's nice for this uh, test setup and uh, i have here a green stack and i push the green tile on the on the screen and send it to the storage <laughs> now the storage <laughs> brings the stack to the other end of the system and to the shuttle and we will see that later but now we just feed the system and here is uh, the white stack so i push the white and the system <coughs> takes the white in again here the, is a green push the green and white again so now there comes one more white and now a green so i push the green and this is a manual way of doing it we can also uh, use uh, barcodes or RFID tags so we can have a barcode on top of the stack and a barcode reader and then it uh, automatically will uh, recognize what type of stack it is so uh, now I should remember to take the white in and then a green and now it will just come all white stacks so we will just wait it feed more wide in yes and that's the way it's going to take all the stacks in so um, yeah let's i think that that was the in feed um, should we say something yeah now we i think we should go to the other end Mess, yeah. Uh, yeah and uh, while we move the station here down to the more interesting end of the system then we will show a video uh, and i can explain a bit about a more automated system i hear that uh, there's a little problem with my sound now and then but uh, i hope it's okay uh, can we show a video So here you see an animation of a, of a system where we uh, put the stacks into the, to an automatic uh, uh, linen storage. And here we see a video from uh, the installation in, uh, at Nortec Steel in Oslo. I think actually today we also have people from uh, Nortec Steel in the online. So uh, welcome if you are, if you are here. Uh, I think also a lot of the viewers uh, online maybe have seen this system live or at least you have seen uh, videos from it. It's one of our first installations and we are very proud of this uh, installation. In this uh, setup we have, uh, it's, it's very automatic because we get uh, all the stacks automatic from the, the, the folding machines and they go on conveyors and uh, we have track and trace on the conveyor so we know exactly the stacks coming into the system and um, and then the pack out is what we call the supermarket model so um, 
It is, uh, an, uh, it is for hospitality, so it's for hot hotel customers. And uh, in uh, hospitality for hotels, they have a, a few, uh, only a few articles compared to healthcare. That's why the supermarket model is, uh, is convenient because you can have your, your sheets, your duvet covers and so on uh, placed on the, um, on the outlet uh, side. But we will get back to that later. Now we are, have the camera on again and we are on the back side of the, of the linen storage. What we can see here is that we have the stacks that Casper uh, just fed into the system. They are now placed here on the, on the shelves, or actually it's conveyor belts. So they are placed in here. And in this system, we have seven layers. And these layers is where the conveyor belts, and they are fed in from this end by the robot shovel. And uh, the shuttle, when we need them, take it out from the same end. And uh, this is what we get a lot of question about this, that it's, it is actually a LIFO, so uh, last in, first out, meaning we will have the oldest stack is the last one we will take out. But we, we control this by uh, putting a timestamp on it, so we know exactly how old the stacks are. And in reality, we can rotate the stacks so we can get, get out the old stacks as well. So uh, in Frey, uh, at this project, we, can, uh, we have one side is with the seven layers, the other side is with the uh, eight layers. So we, we all both have a, side, a seven layers and an eight layers module. I think we should move to the, to the outlet side. And Casper will explain yeah. a bit about uh, the system here. Yeah, what we see here is the this is the packing station, and then, um, as you see in the in the background, if you can see behind here, there's the the shuttle brings out the stacks to the outlet tables, and now we have paused the packing station, so you can see how the shuttle moves and delivers out the stacks. I will uh, for this next order, I will start the system, and it will start bringing stacks to the packing station. On the screen here I can see that we will need we will on this order we will have three green stacks and nine white stacks. Okay. Can you maybe turn the camera a little so you can see the shuttle? Yeah, that's good. So now I'm just, it, normally as an operator, I would take some of the stacks, but now I will just wait and let it be fill up the packing station. So you can see, now we have filled up the packing station. And as an operator, I will then, normally I would take a stack and this, this shuttle will then be continue to deliver out stacks. So now there comes another one and another one to always fill up the packing station. So, so this means that you can have a, the order is just delivered to this outlet table basically. Yeah. yeah. And then you place it on your trolleys. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So what is, so now you have, uh, is it correct that you have one order on this side and what, what is going on over there? Yeah. Here over is uh, the previous order. And it's, it was finished, so we started up on, on the right side. But when, when if, if it was empty now, the left side, and, we, um, and the shuttle have delivered all the stacks for this order, it will continue on the other side and start up a new order. So, okay. um, yes, so it, it shifts between these two sides, so you can always have stacks to put into your customer's trolleys. What about, uh, how do you get the, the, s the information about the order? Uh, wh how does the system know what yeah. to bring out? Yeah, of course there is an ET uh, system behind 
and uh, for for Fry specific, it's the the, the so-called Tikus system. The it the the Tikus system delivers a, a packing list for us, and in the packing list there is uh, several packing orders, and we look at those orders and bring out the right uh, amount of stacks and the right um, type of stacks. Yeah. So for each order. Did I understand it correct that? Uh, of course, there's a lot of orders for a full day, yeah. and uh, and we don't have the right product all the time in in the storage. So, uh, will you then choose the orders based on what is in the storage, or how does how does it work? For fire specific, we 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 have um, yeah. I can go to for five specific. We bring out the order like in the packing list. Okay, so it's it's strictly yeah. in the packing order, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because we have other customers where we uh, where we look in the uh, in the storage, and then we decide what to pack. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. So that that's something we can uh, configure. Yeah. yeah, that's all configurable. Yes. Yeah. So so here at at Fry, I think the uh, there's no RFID in the articles. No. But it it's possible as well. Yeah, it is possible to have RFID or UHF chips and, and so on. Yeah. And by using that, we can see from the chips we read if a stack is mixed, for example. In this, uh, in, in this case, if there was a green stack, a green sheet between white linen, then it will uh, reject it and, and doesn't go out to the, to the customer. Okay, so you, you say that... Um, mm. In Fry, they they use Tikos, SOCOM Tikos mm -hmm. system, mm -hmm. but if uh, could it could that be another system? Yeah, 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 we can we can interface with, yeah, system chips, okay. and, and we already do that. So. Uh, yeah. All right. So now now I understand that uh, that here we bring out an order. So yeah. so on this table there can be ten different articles. Yeah. And uh, but we also have what we call the supermarket model. Yes. What we showed in the video from yes. uh, from Oslo. Yes. So and and it looks like the same because the the table it looks is like the same. Yes. Yeah. And for the supermarket model, we we often have a specific lane for a specific type of article, and often we have two or three layers. So we dedicate one one uh, packing station line for. A specific type of um, linen or stacks. Yeah. So. Yeah. So here you see uh, the the complete uh, layout of the fry. You yeah. see on the on the right side you see the, the inlet conveyor where you manually feed them, and behind the storage you see the the inlet station. And we are now placed uh, completely on the left hand side where we where we have the outlet uh, table. So, Sh should we see uh, the handcraft? Uh, that's another. Uh, that's the supermarket module we see on this picture, where we see all the packing stations with three layers in 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 height of the packing station. Yeah, handcraft is uh, is based in North Carolina in uh, in uh, USA, and um, it's also a, it's a retail medical, so healthcare laundry and. Um, they have a, a lot of different articles, or SKUs, and, um, and they bring in all the, what they call the A and B articles, or A and B SKUs, into the system. And, uh, and then they have it on the, on the supermarket model. Um, so it's, it's a very big system, and we are very excited to install that in uh, this autumn. Yeah, definitely. So, I think uh, let's talk a bit about numbers. Um, mm -hmm. What is the the storage capacity of a system like this? Yeah, for five specific, we have uh, two modules, each twelve meter long, and that that gives us with the pass through twenty nine storage conveyors. Twelve times uh, twenty nine is approximately three hundred and fifty meters, and that can handle around 850 stacks at a time. So, um, and it will give us um, 
around 3.5 hours of storage. Yeah, and to, to compare it, uh, we have been, uh, in the video we saw from Oslo, mm -hmm. we have four shuttles, meaning it's a faster system. In Frey, there's one shuttle. Uh, we can, uh, we have 1,000 1, meter, one kilometer of uh, storage capacity. Yeah. And uh, this translates to around three, 3,000 stacks. And in, uh, in this laundry, it's around one and a half, uh, two hours of, uh, of production. Mm -hmm. But what about, uh, that's the storage capacity. Yeah. Uh, what about how many articles or SKUs can you have in a system? Yeah. You, you can have as many SKU, SKUs as, as, as there is storage conveyors. So for uh, five specific, it's uh, 29 different articles. You can also, if you have uh, high runners, you can dedicate two lines for the same product. So, yes. So, but Mas, if we should talk about the, the main benefits of, of a system like this, like this the Greit system, what is, what is that? Yeah, I would, we talked a bit about it in the beginning, as, uh, but it, it, I would say that the, the centralized uh, workplace for the packout people that is, for me, what is essential for this, because you can, you can make a much better working environment around the people and more efficient, of course, but you can also uh, work more with uh, economics, because normally in a laundry, in a traditional laundry, uh, the packing is done all over the place in the laundry, uh, pulling trolleys around or carts mm. around. Yeah. So just like, uh, like here, we have, a, we have an anti-fatigue mat, so you can make a nice working environment. That, that's for the best benefit of a system like this. But uh, of course, you also have the larger inventory buffer. You use less space in your production. Uh, you have a better inventory control because you know what is in the storage instead of you just have it placed in carts all over the place. Uh, you can also use less trained or less skilled operators uh, and still have the high quality in your order fulfillment. Yeah. So uh, not that you only make the, the nice uh, order fulfillment only the days where the, all the good employees are on the, okay. uh, on the job. It's less labor intensive, but also these days hygiene is important, that you have fewer touches of the linen. Yeah. That's also very yeah. important for the system. Yeah, exactly. So that sounds very nice. Uh, the the Greit, the, there are so many foreign uh, viewers with us. How, how do you pronounce it? Where, do, where did it come from? Greid. Yeah, Greid is from uh, Norwegian. Uh, we delivered and we developed uh, the Greid system together with uh, a Norwegian uh, laundry group, Nordic Steel, and we have a very good co collaboration with this group. So uh, this is a Greid name is dedicated to, uh, to this collaboration with the Norwegian uh, people. And Greid is Norwegian for great. Yeah. So it... it uh, mm -hmm. And uh, over from, for, from Nordic Steel, he uh, really means that he got a very, very great laundry. Yeah. So you pronounce it a bit like uh, great, just great. Yeah, okay. That's great. That's a great system. Um, should we talk a little about the, the prices here? It, it must be very expensive, <laughs> I think. Or yeah, because it's built by the best engineers yeah. in the world, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, it's, uh, but it's, it's difficult to talk about prices because it's, uh, we build everything like modules. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we, we really put a lot of effort into going into details about the production and getting all the numbers. How do you do the pack out in this? And then in the end, we uh, end up after 10,000 different layouts for one customer, yeah. we end up with a layout and then we put a price in the end. Uh, but. I would rather talk about return on investment. And, and we see pretty fast return on investment on, on systems like this. Yeah. Also because your return on investment is, is more, it's more broad because you can have, uh, it's not only from the, from the FTEs, you save the labor. It's also about the better processes you save on inventory mm. and all yeah. this. So. That means a lot also. Yes. I don't know if we already Got some questions, or if we got any questions at all? Yes, we have a question about um, stacking washcloths, for example. Stacking mm. of washcloths. Yeah. 
is a question. Yeah. Could you put in wash claws in a system like this? You can do that. Um, if it can be stapled on a, on a conveyor and it can move on a conveyor, we can take it into the storage, yes. Yeah, I, s I see here that uh, now we have these uh, green paper on it. Yeah. It's just to, to, illustrate the, to illustrate something here, but uh, there's no strapping on it. So you don't need strapping. Again, for, for, for a stack that can hold itself in a square, it's, it's okay without strapping, yes. But strapping is also okay. Yeah, it's also okay, yes. You can yeah. also strap it. Can I put a box of beer in here? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. we have to try that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. I have another question. How high or how many conveyors high could you go? How many conveyors can we go uh, in the height? In height? We can have uh, eight layers in height. And that gives us um, a limitation in the height of the stack to for 210 millimeters in height, yes. Yeah. If, and we can also choose the seven layer, then we have uh, 270 millimeter in height. Why, why is it eight? Why, uh, if I have a very high building, wh why don't we just put in a very high storage? Yeah, there is some limitations on the, on the, on the shuttle and also for the, the distance that it should uh, move will be too long if we put it as yeah. and also for transporting we 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 f we fitted this uh, modules storage conveyors modules so it can fit uh, exactly into a, a 40 cube high cube standard container yeah so it's for yeah. standardization and for yeah. transportation yeah. and Definitely. of course for efficiency and yeah yeah all right any more questions Talking about transport what is the installation time for something like this the installation time for something like this? Yes. Can you maybe say, what, what about Phi? What do you expect? Uh, yeah, and so we, we, we build up everything at home here, test everything. We set up a test environment so the programmers can make all the software for it. And then because it's so modular, we just roll it into the laundry, connect it together and, and start running in a few days. But oh, of course there is some finishing up and uh, installation for like this, we have uh, set two weeks. So approximately two weeks. Yeah. And we, we also saw the, the other, the, the larger system for North uh, America. Yeah. What, that will be a bit longer. Yeah, of course it will yeah. be a bit longer, yes. But, yeah. but again, it is very modular and it, it goes fast. Yeah. Then we've got a question about safety. How safe is the system? So yeah. safety, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I have a lot of meetings in laundries yeah. around the world mm -hmm. and uh, I would say that safety is one of the, the points of the agenda that is getting more and more important for, yeah. uh, for laundries all yeah. over the world. So yeah. how, what have been done to it get the safety better on a system like this? It is one of our uh, very high focus areas because it, it is very important of course and uh, in this system, it's the shuttle there is the dangerous part. So we have fences all the way around the system, and of course you should you need to go into the shuttle once in a while to maintenance. But there we have a safety switch on the door handle into the system, so it will stop and it cannot run with when the door is open. On the packing side here, on this side we have fences on top of the the, the packing station and also underneath the, the, the packing table. So it's, it is not possible to uh, go into the shuttle and get hurt. Yeah, I mean, we, we work a lot with safety and, yeah. and we, uh, we want to work with safety by design. So we, we, mm -hmm. uh, it's some of the first thing when we design a new, uh, a new machine, it is that uh, we think about the safety. And we also, we don't want the safety to make it uh, b bad ergonomics, for example. So we still want the, the good ergonomic. So you, you have a good lifting height when you uh, lift the stacks and so on. So yeah, we, we call it safety by design, I would say. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Any more questions? Um, yes. Where could one visit one of these systems? Where can you visit a system like this? 
I already mentioned uh, that we have a system up in, uh, in Norway and uh, we have had a lot of visitors uh, to this plant in uh, Nordic Steel in, uh, in Oslo. It's still a very good place to go. Uh, it's very convenient to get there. It's very close to uh, Oslo Airport. And hopefully we will also get a lot of visitors down to, uh, to this system at Frey in, uh, in southern Germany. It's close to Munich. Also convenient to get there. And uh, the, the cool thing here is that Oslo is a hospitality, so hotel laundry. And uh, Frey is a healthcare laundry. So it's two different uh, setups. Mm -hmm. And uh, soon, later this year, we will have installation in, uh, in North America. And we will have installations in, in Japan. So, uh, so please contact us. So uh, we will find a place so you can visit. Yeah. How can one get one or buy one? How can you get one? Yeah, I mean, uh, getting one, it's, it's not so, so easy as just buying a simple machine it, because it's more, like a, it's more like a system. So I, I would say you could compare it to uh, buying a bag system because there's a lot of uh, logistic around it. So uh, I would say contact your local uh, Jensen contact. Uh, we are partners with uh, Jensen Worldwide and uh, they will set up uh, uh, some meetings and, uh, and we will, in the beginning, we will talk more about uh, your production flow. We would ask getting your data, uh, your packing data, and then we will analyze them and, uh, and then we will start making a layout and an, an offer, of course. So it is a longer uh, step before we get there, but it's uh, contact your local uh, Jensen sales guy. Then one to Casper, what about yeah. the spare parts for a, a system like this? Yeah, a, a question about the spare parts. And um, the spare parts for a system like this is uh, we, we really try to standardize all the the spare parts, so we don't have a lot of different uh, photo cells and sensors and all that. So we have one type of sensor in this system, we have one type of motor, we have one type of gear. So the amount of spare part that you need for such a system like this is, is not that big. Of course there is some, some, some different parts, but it's, it's not uh, a big amount of, of spare part you need. And also for, for all our other systems, we use the same sensors, the same motors, the same gear and all that. So it's, it's we, 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 we really try to standardize all our components. Yes. We also have a question from the chat again on the, on the cost estimation. And, uh, and I, I would say again, it's, it's very difficult to say uh, amount of uh, euro, how much the costs are for a system like this, because it is very, very modular. So it can be from a very simple system to a very, very big system. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I don't want to put numbers uh, out here, uh, but we do see that in, uh, from, from uh, return on investment calculations in healthcare laundries, in hospitality laundries, uh, in, in Northern Europe, in, uh, in Japan, in North America, that there is a good return on investment. So this is not only in, uh, in high income countries, it's also in, uh, with uh, countries with a lower salary. So I, I would say, let's, uh, let's dig into the details uh, together to, to get the cost. But I, I, I can definitely, I know that <coughs> laundries uh, they would not buy it if the return on investment is not there. Yes. And we've got another question. What's the optimal shuttle to conveyor module ra ratio? Yeah, that, that's something... Uh, can you explain a bit about it? But it, it's a very technical detail. What is the optimal... How many shuttles would you need and how many... Yeah, it also... It, it, it depends on if you're doing the supermarket model or the, the packing order model. Because if you have a packing order model, model, you need to bring out the stacks fast because you are doing one order at a time. For the supermarket model, you will have some flow charts that we deliver out to, and it's they 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 have a buffer by themselves in the in the in the in this in these shelves. So so it depends on which module and how you run your 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 system. 
Yeah, th this, this question is something that we really work a lot on in, in mm. the initial phase of, the, of yeah. this. And that's also why we always ask about getting the data and also how do you want to plan your production during the day. Do you need to, uh, to pack out really quickly in only two or three hours? So you need a, a very uh, fast pro production time. Um, then you need a lot of shuttles. But uh, the key number is here that one shuttle can handle uh, 500 movements, what yeah. we say. And this 500 movements can be 250 stacks in plus 250 stacks out per hour. Mm. But it could also be, if you only have incoming, it could also be 500 in and yeah. no one out. Yeah. So, so, uh, so again, it's, it's a difficult question. It's something uh, that, that we need to dig in more into detail. And, um, and we also, when we do the, the initial layout, we change it a lot. Sometimes we, yeah. we put in this shuttle and then afterwards we find out, oh no, you need, you need this type instead. Or, but because it's very flexible and also if it changes over time, we can also add new modules or make it longer or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's also a very nice question. <coughs> yeah. What do we do with uh, if you have a problem? Yeah, if you have a problem with a system like this, you can start to by calling your Jensen SSC, your service center. And if it's not a problem they can solve, they often contact us. And we have a remote access to, to many of our system if the customer wants it. So we can log on, on to the system and see what is going on and help them from there. So yes. Yeah, I, I know that uh, our online uh, service is, is very good. Yeah. And uh, we, we have, every day we, uh, we go online on different machines. And, uh, mm. and this is standard in more or less all our machines, I yeah, guess. It yeah, it is. So we just need an internet connection and, and we, are, we are remote access to it, we have. Yeah. Do we have more questions? No? Looks like we are finishing up. So uh, if you have any more questions, you can email us on uh, mail at InvertechDK. Contact us anytime. And uh, we will we'll hope to do uh, this uh, online session again. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, there was another question. Mm -hmm. uh, can I put a uh, shuttle on both ends? Mm -hmm. It's also a question that we get actually pretty <laughs> often when, yeah. we, uh, when we visit uh, customers. Uh, we have done this uh, design with only having one shuttle at one end because it's, uh, it's very optimal uh, of, uh, for the mechanical design, for the efficiency of the machine, and, uh, and also for the buffer capacity. So. We believe very, very strongly in this principle. Uh, of, uh, uh, so th the answer is no, not, not from here. We don't believe in uh, having a shuttle in both ends because it will bring up so many, uh, uh, so many problems in, uh, in the software and, and also in uh, optimizing the, the buffer yeah. in the system. So it, it's, a, it's a no. Yeah, I, I also think that it's better to put, if you lose, then put those two in the other end. So have a faster outlet. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Because you will, uh, then you will get more flexibility, you will get uh, more speed as well. Yeah. So uh, we would add all shuttles in, the, in one end. Yeah, and I don't know, have, have we talked about the automated uh, inlet? I talked about it briefly when we saw the, the okay. video from, uh, from Oslo, but uh, I would say half of our system right now is, uh, is uh, with uh, the manual uh, mm -hmm. inlet where you, you just feed it and you type in whatever you want. And the other half would be uh, automatic uh, where we get the data and, and the stacks directly from the, the, the folding machines. Yeah. But also uh, the handcraft is, uh, that's the, the first system where we add UHF technology. Mm -hmm. So uh, where we get the stacks and then uh, read the UHF. Mm -hmm. And we also do, a, a st I think we do a stack uh, control on it. So we check. Uh, yeah, we check for mixed, uh, mixed articles stacks. Yeah. In, the, in, the, in the stack, yes. Yeah, so that, that's also uh, possible. Mm -hmm.
Yes. We hope to do this uh, live session again. Uh, we have quite a few uh, interesting machines in the workshop right now. Yeah. Uh, we have a system going to Japan that could, could give a very nice live session, but also on the soil side. So uh, mm. sign up to our newsletter so or LinkedIn so you can see when we have the next uh, session. And yes. thanks a lot. Thank thanks you, Casper. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for watching. So. Thank you.